Science for Standard 8 Pupils in the new syllabus series. In this program, we shall learn about science of unhealthy crops part 1. With me in the studio is the radio teacher and two Standard 8 pupils, Juma and Wamboy. Welcome to the program. Hello Standard 8 pupils. By the end of this program, you should be able to identify the signs of unhealthy crops. Now pupils, can you tell that a growing crop is not healthy? Tell your teacher the answer. Do so now. Thank you, pupils. Wamboye, how can you tell that a growing crop is not healthy? I think I can tell by comparing the color and length of leaves. That is a good attempt, Wamboye. We can tell that a crop is not healthy by observing the appearance of various parts of the plant and comparing with the healthy ones. When diseases attack crops, various changes occur in various parts. The general growth of the crop is also affected. These changes on the parts of the crop are referred to as signs, spelt S-I-G-N-S, signs. Each crop disease will cause particular signs on the part of the crop it affects. Pupils, tell your teacher some of the signs you may have noticed when a crop is not healthy. Tell your teacher the answer now. Thank you, pupils. Juma, please answer the question. I have noticed the leaves turning yellow, others drying up, and crops with retarded growth. A good answer, Juma. The signs of unhealthy crops can be observed on the flowers, leaves, stems, fruits, as well as roots. For example, Leaves may change color from green to yellow or pink. Pupils, we want to discuss the specific signs of unhealthy crops. We shall first look at stunted growth. Stunted is spelt S-T-U-N-T-E-D. Stunted. Pupils, what is the meaning of the word stunted? Thank you, pupils. Wamboye, please answer the question. I think the word stunted means retarded growth. That is correct, Wamboye. The word stunted means slowed or delayed growth. You can tell that a plant is stunted when you compare its rate of growth with that of a healthy one. For example, maize may be planted on a given garden on the same day, but as the maize plants grow, you may notice some are taller than others. The shorter ones are likely to be diseased. Some of the diseases affect the leaves of crops, affecting the growth of leaves. Juma, what is the main function of green leaves? The main function of green leaves is to manufacture food for the plant. Very good, Juma. The leaves manufacture food materials, which are required for growth. If the leaves are attacked, the disease interferes with the normal functioning of the leaves. 
This will in turn affect the manufacture of food materials. The slow manufacture of food materials will definitely lead to a slow growth rate or stunted growth. Pupils, what do we call the process by which plants manufacture their own food? Tell your teacher the answer. Do so now. Thank you, pupils. Wamboye, what is the process? The process by which plants manufacture their own food is called photosynthesis. Very good, Wamboye. The process by which green plants manufacture food is referred to as photosynthesis. Spelt P H O T O S Y N T H E S I S Photosynthesis Juma Which material in the leaves traps light which is required for photosynthesis? The material is called chlorophyll. That is very good, Juma. The material is referred to as chlorophyll. Spelt C H L O R O P H Y L L Chlorophyll. When the leaves are green, they have a lot of chlorophyll and as such manufacture a lot of food. The chlorophyll is responsible for the green color of leaves. Some crop diseases interfere with the formation of chlorophyll. Pupils, what happens when the leaves lose chlorophyll as a result of disease attack? Tell your teacher the answer. Do so now. Thank you, pupils. One way, what happens? The leaves change yellowish color. Very good, one boy. The loss of chlorophyll makes the leaves to change from green color to yellowish color. This change is referred to as yellowing of the leaves. Yellowish leaves do not manufacture enough food and we can use the yellow color in leaves to tell the presence of a disease. Juma, at what part of the leaf does growth occur? Growth usually occurs near the tip of the leaves. That is a good answer, Juma. Growth occurs near the tip of the leaves. There are some diseases which interfere with growth of leaves. The chemical substances which make the leaves to grow are referred to as hormones, spelt H O. R M O N E S Hormones The hormones may be damaged by certain diseases, making the growth process to be slow or stop. The leaves will therefore show stunted growth. This stunted growth, in turn, will be seen in the overall size of the plant, which will be small, short and weak. Pupils, what are the main functions of roots? Tell your teacher the answer now.
Thank you, pupils. Wamboye, what are the main functions of roots? The main functions of roots are support and absorption of minerals and water. That is correct, Wamboye. Plants use their roots for support and uptake of minerals and water. Attack by disease may affect these functions of roots, thereby making the plant to have a stunted growth. Juma, what will happen to the plant if the roots are not well developed? The plant may not support itself well and may not remain upright. Very good, Juma. Without proper support, the plant can easily be uprooted by wind or may bend. Some diseases interfere with growth hormones in the root system. This makes the root system to be thin and shorter than normal, therefore giving inadequate support. Bending of the plant will make some of the leaves not to be exposed to light leading to inadequate food. This will make the plant to have stunted growth. Wamboye, what is the main function of water in plants? The main function of water in plants is transporting of materials. That is correct, Wamboye. Water is required to transport materials to various parts of the plant. For example, Water transports mineral salts from the roots to the leaves and manufactured food from the leaves to the roots and other parts of the plant. We therefore refer to water as an agent of transport. Pupils, what is the connection between the roots and the amount of water in the plants assuming that there is enough water in the soil? Tell your teacher the connection. Do so now. Thank you, pupils. Juma, what is the connection between the roots and the amount of water in plants. The amount of water in the plant depends on the number of roots. Good answer, Juma. Apart from the number of roots, the length of the roots also affect the amount of water the roots will absorb. Some diseases make the crop roots to be few, short and thin. This poor development will reduce the amount of water absorbed. Little water in the plant will affect the movement of materials, which in turn will lead to stunted growth of leaves and even the roots themselves. Absorption of nutrients is also reduced, leading to the general stunted growth of the whole plant. Wamboye, what are the functions of the stem of a plant? The functions of the stem are support and transport of water, food and mineral salts. You are correct, Wamboye. The stem of a plant allows movement of water from the roots to the leaves. This water from the roots also contains dissolved plant nutrients. When the stem is healthy, it will be large enough to allow for adequate movement of water and dissolved nutrients to the rest of the plant. However, when the stem is attacked by a disease, it becomes thin and weak. This limits the movement of water and minerals even when the roots are well developed. The crop may show stunted growth as a result of this low movement of water and minerals. Pupils, what will happen when the stem of a plant is bent as it grows? 
Tell your teacher the answer. Thank you, pupils. Juma, what happens when the stem is bent? If the stem of a crop is bent, not all the leaves will be exposed to sunlight. That is correct, Juma. If the stem of a crop is bent while growing, some of the leaves are likely to be shaded from direct sunlight. As a result of disease attack, the stems of young growing plants may become thin and weak. The thin and weak stems may not adequately support the weight of the leaves and branches. This will force the plant to bend. The bending of growing crops is referred to as lodging, spelt L-O-D-G-I-N-G, lodging. The shading of leaves from direct sunlight will reduce the manufacture of food materials by the leaves, which in turn will result in the general slow or retarded growth of the plant. Wamboye, what yield are you likely to realize from crops which show stunted growth? The yield got from crops which show stunted growth is likely to be low. That's quite a good response, Wamboye. When crops show stunted growth, it means that the manufacture of food by the leaves is low as well as the absorption of nutrients and water from the soil. Plants require enough of the manufactured food and nutrients to make the produce. For example, grain crops will use the food and nutrients to form many and large grains. Fruit crops will use them to make many and large fruits. It therefore follows that the low supply of food and nutrients will make a crop to have low yields. Diseases greatly affect the formation of various crop produce, leading to low quantity of the yields. Juma, have you seen maize crops or sorghum ears which are blackish in color with poorly formed grains? Yes, teacher. I have also seen coffee berries which are shrunk and tiny. You are very observant, Juma. When you notice such crops, it shows that they have been attacked by diseases. It is important to note